Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of differential calculus, also known as Calc 1. All material has an assumed prerequisite of pre-calculus and a full semester course in trigonometry. A thorough review of prerequisite topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This uh, topic in differential calculus is often glossed over by most professors, but it's one of my favorite topics in calculus because it's just such a cool method for approximating roots or solutions, or actually it has a lot of different uses. And it's really a good uh, method to learn early on in your math career because you're able to see what true, uh, how mathematics is used in the real world uh, for applications and how we can get approximations of solutions to problems without doing an analytic technique or a technique by hand. So let's talk about the concept of Newton's method. Uh, and then uh, develop the process of it. So we're gonna start by graphing the function f of x equals x squared minus two, and then we're gonna develop a scheme to approximate the positive root of this function. Now we obviously know what the solutions to this equation are. It's plus, or they are plus or minus the square root of two. That is not really what I want though. I wanna know what is the square root of two like approximately, and I could get as many digits of accuracy as I want using the method we're about to develop. So here's how the method works. If you happen to know that your equation has a root, and if you've been following my video series uh, so far, then you know that um, there are a lot of ways that you can prove that an equation has a root um, or a function crosses the x-axis. And there's one very nice way of showcasing that the function only crosses the x-axis once. So the way that you would normally show that an equation crosses or that a graph crosses the x-axis is by using the intermediate value theorem, as long as your function is continuous. If it goes from a negative value to a positive value, you're guaranteed that your function will eventually cross the x-axis. And then if you know that, or if you suspect that your function crosses the x-axis only once, then you can prove that using Rolle's theorem, again, as long as your function is continuous and technically differentiable as well. Continuity and differentiability are gonna be required to using Newton's method in a, or as well, because uh, it, is, uh, it requires a derivative and a continuous function, and you'll see why. So let's go ahead and just take a stab in the dark as to what the solution to this equation might be. Generally speaking, we try for a nice easy value. So let's just pretend we guess the solution to, uh, or the root to x squared minus two is one. Obviously we'd be totally wrong, but that's okay. What we're gonna do is go ahead and take a look at the corresponding y value. So this is one, comma f at one. I hope you would agree with me about that. And then what we're gonna do is build a tangent line to the curve at that point. Now this is a skill that we've developed throughout calculus, so it shouldn't be too difficult to find the equation of a tangent line at a point. The equation of the tangent line at this point right here would be y minus f of one is equal to the slope of that tangent line at that point, so f prime at one, times x minus the x value of one. Or in other words, y is equal to, uh, let's see, f at one plus f prime at one times x minus one. And we know that from our linear approximation uh, topics in, uh, well, linear approximations and differentials. So we're used to kind of dealing with that equation in calculus at this point. And if you note, our tangent line crosses the x-axis right here. What we're gonna do is use that x value as our second guess. So our first guess 
for the root of this function or where the function crosses the x axis, we will call x sub one. The second guess will be x sub two. Of course, I'd love to know what that x value is. And since I have a function here, I can go ahead and figure out at least some of these values that I have in this equation, like f of one is uh, negative one. So let me go ahead and plug that into this equation. It's kind of better that I don't, honestly, but let me just showcase this. f of one is negative one plus f prime, which by the way, it's probably helpful to have f prime at hand, two x. f prime at one is two times x minus one. So that's the equation of our tangent line that just struck the x axis at this brand new point called x sub two. And what we're going to do is use that x sub two to use uh, to do the same thing that we just did. We're going to build a tangent line to the function at x sub two comma f of x sub two. So there we have that point x sub two comma f of x sub two, and we'll create yet another tangent line. And this one will be at that new point. And let me just showcase this with a blue line here. That's our tangent line. And note, where does that tangent line cross the x-axis closer to the actual root. So at some new value called x sub three is what we're going to call that. Whoops, did not mean to erase everything there. Just wanted to erase the x sub three so that I could at least get a better picture. So that value will be x sub three, and that's even closer to our root. And then you would re rinse and repeat. You get closer and closer to the root using this method. Now, it's very hard for me to showcase using uh, a finitely uh, coarse graph like this, but I could use technology to show it to you. But before I do that, I want to showcase the method a little further here. So again, we take an initial guess and we plug it into our function. We get an output and then we find the equation of the tangent line to the function at that output and it strikes that tangent line strikes the X axis at a value we'll call X sub two. And then the point X sub two F of X sub two on the curve will build yet another tangent line. And where that tangent line strikes, we'll call that X sub three. And you continue this process. So you could build a tangent line again until you get infinitesimally close to uh, your root. You keep building these equations and tangent lines and then finding out where they strike the X axis. But that brings up a good point. Where does this tangent line right here, where does it strike the X axis? Well, let's see this tangent line hits the X axis when the Y value is zero. That is when zero is equal to F of one, plus f prime at one times x minus one. We could solve this for x. We would just subtract f of one from both sides, divide both sides by f prime at one, and then add one to both sides. So this would be our new value. We'll call that x sub two, right? Now we can start to generalize this statement. But before I generalize the statement, I just want to show you the process. So this is a Desmos app that somebody else built actually. And we are gonna go ahead and have our function be the x squared minus two that we were just looking at. You could ignore the rest of this information. So I'll just close that up. Our initial guess was x equals one, right? So let's go ahead and go back to one for our initial guess, which is right about there. So we're going to say our initial guess is x equals one. And we're going to build a line, a tangent line at one comma f of one. So I'm going to click to turn on that tangent line. You can see that our first guess was x equals one and gives us this output right here of one negative one. And we build a tangent line where that tangent line strikes the X axis. That will be our second guess for the root. So the first guess for the root was one, but now using a tangent line, we can get a better approximation to the root as 1.5. If we don't like that approximation, if we think, well, that's too much of a distance there, 
we'll build yet another tangent line, but this tangent line will be at this new guess. So let's go ahead and see that. This new tangent line will take the X value here. We'll go up to the function. It's very hard to see there, but we'll go up to the function and build this orange tangent line. And you can see the orange tangent line crosses the X axis at a point much, much closer to the true root. But if you're not happy with that approximation, well then you could use that X value to create yet another tangent line at the function at x equals whatever this number is. It's a 1.4167. So let's go ahead and do that. And in green, you can see we used uh, this x value to build a tangent line to our function. If I zoom in, you can see that that green tangent line gets really close to the function value, right? The tangent line hits the x-axis at 1.4167. For two, and the actual value is not truly that, it's close to that. Uh, and so we could do this yet again. We can continue doing this iterative scheme, plugging in our x sub, what is that? One, two, three, this is x of four, plugging in x of four and getting even a better approximation. If I zoom in, I'm continually zooming in. This is as far as Desmos, Desmos will allow me to zoom in. So you could see that we will probably have a pretty accurate uh, estimate of the crossing point for this function with within four iterations. The true value is 1.4142135623. So that's pretty darn good. If I zoom out, you can see that we definitely have a very good accurate view of the uh, of the value of the root. And that's how Newton's method works. It's a really beautiful method. We're gonna go ahead and build the method and then talk about what an iterative scheme is because iterative schemes are really where it's at in applied mathematics. So how does this iterative scheme work and what is an iterative, iterative scheme? Well, an iterative scheme is a scheme where you're plugging something in, you're taking a wild guess. It's not too wild. There's actually a restriction at the very beginning, but you take a guess as to what a solution is. Uh, we know the true solution just because we can do it analytically is the square root of two for that function we were originally working with. However, you would take a wild guess. Let's just say that we didn't know it was the square root of two. And so we take a wild guess and we call that guess well, in the textbook that I use, they call it X sub one. In reality, um, most people call it X sub zero. It's the zeroth guess, but I'm sticking with the notation in my textbook. I am half applied mathematician and half pure mathematician. And my applied side would say that's a bad starting point. It should always be X sub zero, but whatever. Uh, this is the scheme that my textbook follows. So I'll just go ahead and follow that as well. We take a wild guess that we think is pretty close to the, to the solution or to the root. And we find the tangent line at x sub one comma f at x sub one. So the tangent line to the curve at that point. And we know the tangent line to the curve at that point. So I'm gonna write x sub one here. The tangent line to the curve at that point is gonna be y minus, let me zoom in because otherwise my ink goes wild. It's y minus the y value for the function at that point. And that's equal to the slope of the tangent line at that point, which is f prime of x sub one times x minus the x value at that point, whatever that is. And you could technically set this, solve this for y. I'm not going to for a very specific reason. But then what we did is we created a tangent line, right? So let's go ahead and in red, just create a nice beautiful tangent line where it crosses the X axis is going to be what we call our next guess. So this point where it crosses, what color was I using green? Where it crosses here, we'll call that X sub two. So our next guess, X sub two, will occur when this tangent line crosses the X axis. And this happens when Y is equal to zero. And I actually could say it like this, this implies Y is zero. So we're just gonna assume that's gone. And we have negative F of X sub one. We are going to go ahead and call our X value here, 
x sub 2. That's our next x value we want to get to. That's where that's the x value where it hits, hits the x axis, where the tangent line hits the x axis. So dividing by f prime of x sub 1, we get negative f of x sub 1 divided by f prime at x sub 1 is equal to x sub 2 minus x, but we'll go ahead and uh, minus x sub 1, that is, but we'll go ahead and add x sub 1 to both sides. Let me clean this up slightly. So x sub 2 is given by this equation. So as long as I know my initial guess and the function and the function's derivative, I can find my second guess pretty quickly. Well, now we build a tangent line at x sub 2. And the tangent line is going to look like this. Let's go ahead and just dash out some values here. Make sure I have my green pen on, which I do. So I'm going to dash out a line until I get up to the curve. And using the same ink I used before, let me move that off to the side. This point we know is x sub 2 comma f of x sub 2. And we're going to build yet another tangent line at this point. And the equation of the tangent line at that point would be y minus f at x sub 2 is equal to the slope of the tangent line at that point, f prime at x sub 2, times x minus the x value at that point, which is x sub 2. Great. So we have kind of a similar situation as we had before. Let's go ahead and draw that tangent line. And the tangent line here is approximately, I mean, very approximately, because I'm drawing this sort of by hand, but in red, I'll still do it. Tangent line looks something like this, it crosses right there. Let me go ahead and move this off to the side. And we'll call that next point where it strikes x sub three. Well, let's figure out how to find x sub three. Well, x sub three will occur when the previous tangent line, this guy right here, crosses the x axis. Therefore, what we want is this previous tangent line, if we want that to cross the x axis, we're going to let this y value be zero, and you'll get negative f of x sub 2 is equal to f prime at x sub 2 times x minus x sub 2, but x itself, where it crosses the x axis, we're going to call x sub 3. Solving this for x sub 3, this would imply that we have, uh, let's see, a negative f of x sub 2 divided by f prime of x sub 2. And then we'll add, because that gets this over there, we'll add this x sub 2 to both sides. And you will get the exact same equation as we had boxed up above. The only difference is the index on x. In general, the n plus first guessed, guessed, sorry, the n plus first guess <laughs> is equal to the nth guess minus the function evaluated at that nth guess divided by the function's derivative evaluated at that nth guess. It's actually not too bad of a scheme. Now let's talk about an iterative scheme visually before we actually run this scheme. Uh, so an iterative scheme visually looks like this. You have some machine. In this case, the machine that we have is that formula x sub n plus one is equal to x sub n plus or minus f at x sub n divided by f prime at f of x sub n or f prime at x sub n. So that's the our machine. So I'm just going to call this the machine, right? And what happens is you plug in a guess and out pops the next guess. And you take that next guest guess, sorry, and you plug that in. And when you plug that in, I'll use a different color. When you plug in that next guess, out pops another, the next guess in line. You take that next guess in line, plug it into your machine, and out pops yet another guess. Take that next guess, plug it back into the machine. So you're basically just 
Get in an answer, plug in that answer. Get in an answer, plug in that answer. And by the way, this is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Imagine that you're given an equation you don't know how to solve and you say, well, I'll take a stab at it. The answer is one and somebody says no. And you say, well, let me plug that into your function then. You get some output and you say, now I'm gonna plug that output in. Well, now I get 1.2. And they say, man, you're closer. How'd you do that? Meh, magic. And then you plug it back in so on and so forth. It's not that you're plugging it into the function, you're plugging it into a machine based upon the function. The machine in this case is this machine right here. So in general, Given a continuous and differentiable function, those are both very strict requirements. You need it to be continuous and differentiable. If either of those fails, you cannot use Newton's method. The continuity is needed because of the way, you could probably visualize it just because of the way the scheme works. If you have a discontinuity here, all hell breaks loose basically. And if the function's not differentiable, then because the scheme relies on derivatives, things can break down. So you need continuity, you need differentiability. But given a function that's continuous and differentiable on an interval i, you're asked to approximate the root. And we'll do this iteratively using Newton's method. The first thing you're gonna do is compute the function's derivative because you'll need that to run the scheme. The next thing you're gonna do, generally speaking, you don't have to always do this step, but I recommend you do this step, is use the intermediate value theorem to get a sub interval of the interval on which the function is continuous and differentiable, where you know the function goes from negative to positive or positive to negative. In other words, you just wanna find an interval where you know there's a root. So you want to find an interval from let's say A to B, where you know the function crosses the X axis. You also, uh, want to make sure in your next step to make a guess where that guess is on that interval, make a guess is for the root, where the derivative at your guess is not near to zero. So for an example, if I were to say, great, I know there's a root between A and B because uh, F is continuous and uh, because F of A is positive and f of b is negative in this picture. So therefore there must be a root between a and b. And everybody rejoices, yes. And you say, great, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that the root is here. Well, there's a problem. <laughs> if you guess that the root is right there, the tangent line strikes the x-axis far, far away. So the closer the derivative is to zero uh, for your guess, the worse your guess is. So in fact, if the derivative is identically zero at your guess, then your tangent line will never give you an X value to strike the X axis with. So that is an unfortunate piece. So you're gonna have to make a guess so that the derivative at your guess is not close to zero. So like in this case, the derivative uh, is negative, but not uh, not near to zero. So notice the slope of the tangent line there is enough so that it'll uh, the tangent line will strike the x-axis closer to our root than that initial one we drew. So anyhow, choose an, an initial guess such that the derivative at that initial guess is within that interval and uh, also so that its derivative is not near to zero. Uh, and then start the iterative process. Just take your guess, plug it into this formula, and you will get your next guess. Take that next guess, plug it into this formula. You'll get the next guess and rinse and repeat. This is a calculator usage method. So you will use some type of calculator for this. And this is, again, the entry level into beautiful applied mathematics problems approximating solutions um, to equations or approximating roots to functions can be done very easily using Newton's method. All right, so we're done with this video. In the next video, we'll just do some uses of Newton's method. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes Effects more than we can sometimes see Things for what they are and work together
until you feel at peace. Listen close, don't talk too much, that isn't cold. Sure, you may really hurt inside. It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.